Would you like to earn $120 for a single short video? Because that's how much Danco pays for it. Almost everyone who makes such videos uses After Effects, but in this video, I will show you how to make videos of similar quality for completely free. This video is part of my new course, which you will find on school.com. My goal with this is not to make a flashy video, but to give as much value as simply as possible. If you have an idea how I could make these videos even better, please write it in the comments. Let's get started. The clock animation. We will use simple black and white images, masking, and keyframes. First, put a black image on the main layer. Increase its length to about 30 seconds and use the W hotkey to cut off the excess part. The longer the animation, the better, because if we want to speed it up or slow it down later on in other projects, or if we only need one part of it, we can cut it out without quality loss. After this, go to the beginning and duplicate the layer with the Ctrl C and V keys, then replace it with a white image by simply dragging it over the new layer. Go to the mask tab and select the circle shape, then enlarge it to make it as big as possible. Correct the width and height to match, and make sure to leave some space to the edges of the screen, and to center it. This will be necessary for two reasons, I'll show you why later in the video. Duplicate the white circle layer, replace it with a black one as before, by dragging the black image over it. Then reduce its size as desired, depending on how thick you want the frame to be. Duplicate the white layer again, pull it up above the black layer, change the mask to a rectangle and make it look like the hand of a clock. Change the size and position of it, so that the end of the hand is in the center of the screen or a little above it. If you want to make your work easier later on, make a cross in the center like this. Resize the current frame to be thinner and smaller. Duplicate it and rotate it by 90 degrees. Select these two layers and create a compound clip, then right click and freeze option. Delete the compound clip and increase the size of the frozen image to the length of the entire animation, then change its opacity to 50%. You should get something like this. If you have it, double the white circle layer again, drag it above the black layer, change the mask to a rectangle, resize it to display one of the hands, and drag it a little higher than the center point. If we simply left it like this, and placed a keyframe on the rotation property with the zero value, then a keyframe at the end of the layer, rotated by 3600 degrees, and watched the animation, we would get this result, which is not what we wanted at all. The reason for this is that every element, including the image that we want to use as the hand of the clock, rotates around its own center. In order for the pointer to move around properly, as a hand of a watch should, we have to use a little trick. Delete the keyframes, then right click and make a compound clip out of it. Let's go to the beginning, right click again and freeze the clip. Delete the unnecessary part, then increase the length of the new image. If we now repeat the previous steps and place a keyframe for the rotation at the beginning with 0 degrees, then at the end of the clip, by stepping back one frame and rotating it by 3600 degrees, we will get the desired result and the pointer will now rotate around the center of the clock. So, in summary, if you import an image and move it somewhere, the center of the image also moves relative to the center of the screen. However, if you make a compound clip out of it, this center will return to the center of the screen, but the image will remain in the new position. Let's make the other hand of the clock. If I were to double the former hand and reduce its size to 50%, you can see that the distance from the center has also decreased. If I return it to 100% and only reduce its height to 50%, I still get the same result, only the shape of the pointer has changed. The problem with this is that the second pointer is not at the same distance from the center of the clock. So let's delete this layer and repeat the process shown with the first hand. I'm speeding this up, so I don't waste your time. You just have to pay attention to the distance of the two pointers from the center is the same. It is easiest to compare this at the starting frame. If it matches, you just have to convert it into a compound clip and freeze it. If you have it, all that's left is to place the keyframes at the beginning and the almost end frame. Set the smaller pointer rotation to 0 at the beginning and 360 degrees at the end and correct the other pointer to 12 by 360, i.e. 4320 degrees at the end. Hide the auxiliary cross used to indicate the center point and if you did everything right, you should get a result like this. Let's add one last refinement to the middle of the clock. To do this, double the white circle layer again, adjust its size, drag it above the black layer, 
then repeat the same with the black layer, and we are done. But in order for it to be a real Danco animation, one more thing is missing, which is none other than the glowing effect. In order to apply an effect to it, export the clip, delete the previous layers, and then import the finished animation. Place it on a new layer, then go to the Effects tab. One of the free effects we can use is called Edge Glow. You have to play with the strength a bit, but as you can see, it's not exactly the best choice. In some cases, the neon outline effect can be good, but unfortunately its color cannot be adjusted. Of course, we could make a compound clip out of it and desaturate it, but that would be a bit too many unnecessary steps. Perhaps the best effect among the free effects is the gleam effect. You have to play with the settings a bit, but if you set it right, you get a pretty good result. The best would be the flash vibration effect, but unfortunately this is a pro effect, which I cannot show because the pro version is not available in our country. But I'll leave a YouTube link in the description where you can see how to use this effect. The clock animation. Method number two. We will use simple black and white texts, modifying their properties, and also keyframes. First, put a black image on the main layer, and increase its length to about 30 seconds. Now go to the text menu, and add a default text to a new layer. Increase its length, and change the text to the letter O. Change the font style to a nice font. I'd like to use the Futura font, because it's nice and round, and it's also very thin. Change the size of the font as large as possible, so that it fills about 80% of the entire screen, then position it in the middle. If you have it, duplicate the text layer and replace the letter O with a capital I. This will be one of the pointers on the clock. Change its size and position, so that it is slightly higher than the center of the clock. If you are not sure where the center is, drag the white image onto a new layer. Go to the Mask tab and select the Square option. Rewrite its dimensions so that only a thin strip remains. Duplicate this layer and rotate it 90 degrees. Select the two layers and make a compound clip from them, then right-click, edit, and choose the Freeze option. Now delete the compound clip and increase the size of the frozen image until the end of the video. Find the Blend property and change the opacity to 50% and drag the layer below the text layers. This cross will mark the center of the circle. Select the upper text layer and change the size of the text. It's completely up to your preference how big you want it to be. Play with the sizes a bit, adjust the height and position until you're satisfied with the result. Now select the previous text layer, find the glow property, check it, and adjust the intensity and range values as you please. For me, my favorite result is at the values about 40 and 80. If you like it as well, switch to the other layer and enter the same values as before for the glow property. Select the first text layer again and make a compound clip out of it. We will do the same with the other text layer, but before converting it, copy it so that we have the other hand of the clock as well. Now we can convert it to a compound clip. Select the new text layer, adjust its size and position so that the distance measured from the center of the clock is the same as the distance of the other hand. If you're done positioning, let's convert this to a compound clip as well. Select and copy the circular compound clip and resize it so that it does not touch the hands. This will be the middle of the clock. Now select the first compound clip, then right click, edit, and select the freeze option. Delete the compound clip and increase the size of the frozen image to the full length of the video. Repeat this with the other compound clips as well. Select the top frozen image and place a keyframe at the beginning. Then go to the end of the clip, go back one frame and place another keyframe and enter the value 360. Repeat this with the image below, but now write 4320 in the rotation value at the end keyframe. Hide the cross layer showing the center and if you did everything right, you should get something like this. The target board animation. We will use black and white shapes, masking, and keyframes. Duplicate the black background layer and replace it with the white image. Go to the mask tab and select the circle option. Make the circle as large as possible, but leave some space for the effects later on. Duplicate this white circle layer and replace it with the black image, then reduce its size as desired. Select the white and black circle layers, duplicate them, move them above the other layers. If you have it, first resize the white and then the black layer in the mask property so that the alternating black and white rings are roughly the same size. 
Repeat this step once more to form the third white circle. Finally duplicate the last white layer and resize it. This will be the center of the target board. This is the basis with which we will work. Place a keyframe at the beginning and reduce its size to 1%. To make it easier to work with, cut it down to about 5 seconds. Zoom in on it with the Shift plus Z hotkey and place a keyframe at 1 second as well, setting the zoom back to 100%. Select the black and white layers underneath, then right click and make a compound clip out of them. Make a picture out of it with the right click, edit, and freeze option, then increase its size. Place a keyframe at 1 second, resize it to 1%, then another keyframe at 2 seconds with 100%. Repeat this step with the next two black and white layers, but now the keyframes will be at 2 and 3 seconds, then once again placing the keyframes at 3 and 4 seconds on the next layer. If you did everything right, you should get something like this. The animation is a bit choppy, but sometimes that can be necessary, so I wanted to show it. But now let's fix it to make it more even. One method is to move the keyframes closer together with a small overlap. Select both keyframes, Ctrl C, then go forward half a second and copy back with the Ctrl V hot key, and delete the original keyframes. Now the starting keyframe is half a second, and the final keyframe is one and a half seconds. Repeat this with the other two layers, so that the starting and ending keyframes at one and two, respectively at one and a half, and two and a half seconds. If you look at it, the animation is already much better. The other option is to return the keyframes to their original state. That is, 4 1 and 2 seconds on the first layer, 2 and 3 on the second, and 3 and 4 seconds on the third. Select the topmost frozen image and increase the size of the starting keyframe at 1 second so that it is just the size of the circle layer in front of it. Then the closing keyframe at 2 seconds should be back to 100%. Repeat this with the other two frozen layers below. Make sure that the starting keyframe is always the same size as the layer in front of it, i.e. it covers it exactly at the start, and the closing frame is always 100%. If we have done the resizing, then select the topmost frozen layer, and cut the part before the first keyframe with the W hotkey. Then we repeat this on the other two layers, that is, we delete the parts before the first keyframes. If we look at it now, this will be the end result. The target board animation. Method number two. We will use simple black and white texts, properties, and keyframes. Copy the black main layer to a new layer and replace it with the white image. Go to the mask tab and select the circle shape and reduce its size to about 100. Then text menu and add a new default text. Increase its size to full length, rewrite the text to a capital O, select the Futura font style and increase the font size to cover 80% of the screen. Unfortunately, this font does not center the letter O to the center of the screen, so you have to adjust it manually, so that the previous circle layer is centered in relation to the new layer. If you succeeded, all you have to do is to check the glow property and rewrite the values to about 40 and 80. After that, right click and convert it to compound clip, then right click again, edit and freeze menu. Delete the unnecessary part and adjust the size of the layer to the entire length of the video. Duplicate this frozen image layer twice, then place a keyframe at the beginning and rewrite the zoom value to 1%. Then go to the end and go back one frame and add another keyframe, but now the zoom value should be 100%. Repeat these steps on the other two layers, or just delete them and copy the first layer again two times. Now go to the beginning of the clip and go forward on the timeline until the size of the first ring is about 25%. Place a keyframe at this location and erase the keyframe from the end. Let's go back to the previous keyframe, continue along the timeline until the size of the second ring reaches about 45%. At this point place a keyframe on the second layer and delete the keyframe at the end. Let's repeat these steps for the third layer as well, but let's go to about 70% here. If we want another ring, simply duplicate the last layer and place the keyframe at the end at 100%. You should get something like this. Oops, I messed something up. Move the center of the circle from the bottom layer to the top and place keyframes on it as well for the zoom property. And here is the final result. So here's a quick summary and some pro tips from today's video. It's better to use shapes because you can create or use images so you have much more options. But if you want to apply the glow effect, 
you need a CapCut Pro account for the flash vibration as the best low effect. If you want to know how to use this effect, check out Kadret Rensi's video, link in the description. It's much easier to use texts, and you can apply the built-in glow effect, and also if you scale it up, it doesn't lose quality compared to images, but you have to search for the right fonts, so it can take a lot of time up front. If you have an image or animation with a black background, use the blend property and set it to screen to hide the black parts. If you convert an image or any other asset that doesn't move to a compound clip, then use the edit slash freeze option to turn it into an image. Then do all the effects and changes on this freezed image so that you can create a compound clip from it again. When you create a compound clip, it resets its center point from the original image center to the screen center. Leave some room from the edges of the screen when you create a compound clip because you might want to apply effects on it later on and some effects edges just get cut off like with this play pendulum effect. The one frame step back from the end of the clip is also necessary because if we put it at the end, CapCut will not play the full animation. That's all for me for this video. If you want more, check out my school course. You can download all the assets I've created for this video for free. Link is in the description. And as always, like, subscribe, and leave a comment for this nice guy.